Hey guys, welcome back. We are going to be talking today about the three major things that Andrew did during his presidency. Um, the Indian Removal Act, which caused the Trail of Tears, and then the preservation of the Union. So I hope that you will watch the video on the Padlet here and then take notes with me. Uh, in our PowerPoint, the picture that we look at today, I hope that you will notice and wonder about what's happening here. Once you notice the faces, notice that it's not just young people, it's the old, it's the children. You can see over here, some folks have had to sit down on the side, they're probably not gonna make it. Back here, other folks are lying in the snow. They are being led at gunpoint because that's going to start our first notes on Andrew Jackson today. It is not happy, happy, joy, joy. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna to add to our notes today, big number one, is the Indian Removal Act. And that happened in 1830. So two years into his presidency, he signs this document. He supports it. Okay. I'm gonna draw me a little map of the United States, this, this uh, Eastern side. I'm gonna draw there's Florida and then there's Texas, okay. And then coming up from Louisiana, we have the Mississippi River. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 okay. All right. And then Tennessee, you know, it's right there. It's Western border is the Mississippi. So we kind of draw Tennessee right there. I know it's not perfect or to scale. Okay, this is Tennessee. And over here we have the Appalachian Mountains and here's where we would find the Cherokee Native Americans. Here's where, this is their territory where they would live. And then over in the middle part, I draw a wonky box. That is Oklahoma. The Indian Removal Act said that all Native American tribes, not just the Cherokee, but they're the ones that we are uh, most well known here in Tennessee. We also have the creek that would have lived down in this area. We have the Seminole. We have all kinds of Native American tribes up north that we don't even talk about because we're not in Tennessee, but Iroquois, Huron, any of the Native Americans on the east side of the Mississippi. That's over here. The Indian Removal Act said that all of them would move out of the East. Now, technically, that's not what the act said. So I'm gonna give you the technically what the law said and then what Andrew Jackson did, okay? And allowed to happen with this law. So technically, allegedly, okay? And I apologize, this note's kind of long, but I wanted to make sure I got it to you. So technically the law allowed the federal government, when we say federal, we mean the United States, not Tennessee, not Murfreesboro, the whole United States. It allowed the federal government to 
and I'm putting it in quotation marks. Negotiate. Technically, the law allowed the federal government to negotiate treaties with Eastern tribes for their lands, okay? That meant that we, the government wanted to get the Eastern tribes, the tribes in the East, the Native Americans in the East, to move from the East to the West, okay? So because after the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812, we have all this land, okay, the colonies are growing and growing and growing. And so they're growing into the Native American lands. They're taking them, okay? And the Native Americans are not happy about it. So it's causing fights. It's causing uh, conflict and hardships. So the US, is, the US does not recognize the Natives as uh, citizens of the country. And they're like, well, we want you to get out of this area. We own this land now. So we want you to get out of here. So, you know, all these colonists, all these folks that are here can uh, have your land and grow stuff on it and hunt on it. Also gold was discovered. Some gold was discovered in them, their hills, uh, especially in the Cherokee Appalachian area. And guess who wanted the gold? the United States colonists, the, the U.S. citizens. They wanted that land. They wanted that gold. Um, so what they were supposed to do, allegedly, technically, was to negotiate and say, hey, we will give you this if you will move your whole tribe to the West. And they set up in Oklahoma what were called um, reservations or reserved land for the native tribe. They're like, hey, you're getting land. We'll take this land. You go, you go do that land. Go, d you go do that land. Okay. But guys, we're not talking about Native Americans living in teepees. Okay. That is a misnomer. There was only a few tribes in the middle of the country at any point in time that had teepees. When we're talking about the Cherokee, they have houses, they have schools, they have a, a language that they use, they have a written newspaper that is published. They are not just, uh, you know, living in some little cloth uh, house that they can just pick up on their back and move. They are established. This is their home. They, ha they have crops that grow in this soil. They have animals that live on, the, on their farms. They have children that go to schools here. Okay, and so what we're negotiating with is uh, we're going to give you some land that has nothing on it. There's no houses, there's no schools, there's no farms, the land's not even like tilled up and ready for you. It's a really poopy deal. Okay, so um, needless to say, the Native Americans were not like, yeah, this sounds great. I'm going to go out in the wilderness and have to rebuild everything when I get there. Um, my grandmother is 90. How's she going to get there? There aren't airplanes. There aren't cars. Um, my wife just had twins. How are we going to get those babies there? Okay. So nobody was really keen on negotiating. So instead, in reality,
Sorry, I know, I know that's a, I know that's a lot to write. So in reality, it let the government, and I put in quotes, relocate. Re means again, locate means to, to move. Relocate means to move them. Move the Eastern tribes to land called reservations in Oklahoma. And by relocate, what we mean is force them at gunpoint. Can you imagine folks coming to your house and at gunpoint forcing you to leave it? Saying, grab what you can, carry what you can on your back. You're about to walk thousands and thousands of miles. I know my map is tiny here, but some of y'all, some of y'all get tired just walking a lap around the track. Some of y'all get tired walking from the, the mountains like Gatlinburg to Nashville. That seems like forever, ever, ever to walk. That's from the Appalachian Mountains where you go Gatlinburg to Nashville. We're talking about from there all the way to Oklahoma. Sorry, I'll move my pen so you can see. So in reality, let the government re relocate or force at gunpoint the Eastern tribes to land called reservations. Hey, you got this really cool reservation here. We, we, we reserved it for you. No, in Oklahoma. This happened many more times in our history, not only in Oklahoma, but into other, other states as well. Um, in some of the places they call the land the Badlands, they moved them from lush green mountain areas into uh, a barren rocky uh, land where nothing would grow. You know, the Native Americans called it the Badland because th they couldn't even grow the crops that they needed there. So, you know, I think about my grandmother, my Nana, she's 90 years old. And I think about when she comes to my house, how I hold onto her arm and have to help her walk up and down the four steps to get in and out of the house on the front porch. And I imagine, would, I leave, would we leave her? Would, would she be allowed to stay? Would they let Nana stay? No. The soldiers, the soldiers, the troops that Andrew Jackson sent down there moved them out. So Nana, carrying what she could, would have to walk from Tennessee to Oklahoma. Some of you probably have younger brothers and sisters, toddlers, maybe even babies. Are you going to carry them the whole way? Because that's what families did. Pretty crazy. Okay. So I'll let you get that note down. And <clears throat> there's a song that um, I learned when I was in third or fourth grade. Okay. And it says, I'll try and sing it horribly for you. I apologize. Who were the Cherokee and where did they go? Who were the Cherokee and where did they go? The Cherokees were Indians that lived in the beautiful Appalachian Mountains. They worked very hard and were full of woe when they were told that they must go on a long, long journey to Oklahoma on a long, long journey called the Trail of Tears. All right, so the next note uh, under Indian Removal Act, I'm gonna need more space. So I'm coming over to my next page. Of course, go back and pause if you didn't get it ready. Okay, so here we are. We have the Cherokee Nation. So when the Indian Removal Act went into place, the Cherokee Nation, that were in Georgia in 1831. So after the act went into place, okay, they, the Cherokee Nation sued Georgia, okay? And was like, this isn't fair, you can't do this to us. And the Supreme Court of the United States decided that, yeah, that wasn't fair, that the US should have no power over Native American land. Okay, 
So the Supreme Court, the highest court in the nation. The Supreme Court decision said the US, the United States government had no power over the tribal lands or over the tribal nations. Woohoo, that's great, right? So you're not gonna force us off the land because you have no power over it. Well, here's where we gotta have our shocked face. Andrew Jackson, President Jackson ignored the Supreme Court ruling. He sent troops down there anyways to force them out. He completely ignored how our government was set up. And that's why folks were like, yeah, King Andrew does what he wants. which because he ignored it and they forced him out at gunpoint, big event number two mentioned in that song is the Trail of Tears. The Cherokee are the ones that are most talked about, but there were tribes all over the Eastern United States that were forced off their land. So if you look here, you can see here's Tennessee, here's Murfreesboro right there on the map. And you can see the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, the Creek, the Seminole, those are all the ones that were down in these territories. You can see their lands there in the dark green. And then you can see the routes that some of them had to take. Many of them walked the distance. They had to cross rivers. Um, some of the Seminole you can see walked and some of them tried to cross the Gulf in what boats and technology they would have had at the time. And then Oklahoma was divided and reserved for those different Indian territories, those different Native American spaces. Of course, now Oklahoma has become a state and is a part of the United States government. And so again, even after they were moved here, they are continually forced off and their, their culture and their nation destroyed. So it's just very, very sad time in our history that we see that happen to people. Here is another picture of the Cherokee being led from their homes at gunpoint, some arrested. Um, so Trail of Tears is what it became known as, meaning that the tears as they walked dropped onto the trail that they were walking on. You can actually go and see uh, in several places you can see it comes right by Murfreesboro and Nashville. There are several places and museums um, where you can go and walk on this trail. Um, there's actually a lot of stones along the trail and they say that the Native American tears turned into those stones. Okay. So Trail of Tears. During the fall and winter, U.S. troops rounded up the Eastern tribes and forced them to Oklahoma. So U.S. troops during the fall and winter so it wasn't even spring and summer that they let them move. It was during the cold, during the fall and winter, rounded up tribes. And 
and forced them to march west to Oklahoma. Approximately 4,000 Cherokee died on the journey. Sorry, that should be a, I don't know why I capitalized it. Funky Capital, Miss Patterson. And they died of the cold, starvation. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's a long trip to try and pack food for and with no time because you're being rushed out of your house at gunpoint and a sickness. Again, middle of winter, Nana, babies, me and you. That would be a hard journey on foot. And folks are like, well, they had land. They got, they got land, but the land was different. You have to understand Native Americans um, as a part of their spirituality are deeply connected to their land and they lost the tribes lost the land that their ancestors had lived on for thousands of years. The land that their ancestors had lived on before the Europeans ever came over, before we had the Revolutionary War, before we became America, the tribes lost their ancestral lands. Okay. From our social studies book, I'm going to cut out two things. On page 94, I'm going to cut out this map to remind me of the routes that they took. And on page 95, I'm gonna cut out this primary source, this brownish box here, and I'm gonna glue it in, okay? So page 94, it's the map. Maybe I can get it on there. And this primary source, now I'm probably gonna to have to flip get it in space. Yeah, I'm gonna flip. All right, so you can pause if you haven't got those notes down. All right, and then we're gonna get those cut and glued in. So those are two very, 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 very bad things. Indian Removal Act that Andrew Jackson signed. And then by ignoring the Supreme Court ruling and sending troops, he further enforces the horribleness and that becomes known as the Trail of Tears. This is a primary source from a US officer that was sent by Andrew Jackson. This is what he says. The removal of Cherokee Indians from their lifelong homes in the year of 1838 found me a young man in the prime of life and a private soldier in the American army. Being acquainted with many of the Indians and able to fluently speak their language, I was sent as interpreter into the Smoky Mountain country in May of 1838 and witnessed the execution of the most brutal order in the history of American warfare. I saw the helpless Cherokee arrested and dragged from their homes and driven at the bayonet point into the stockades. And in the chill of a drizzling rain on an October morning, I saw them loaded like cattle or sheep into 645 wagons and forced towards the West. So this is a soldier for the American army who is doing this under the orders of Andrew Jackson. And you can tell he does not feel very happy about having to do this. He says it was brutal. He uses vocabulary like dragged. 
forced. So even a primary source from the time is saying this is wrong. All right, the last thing, stay with me, I know it's a lot today. The last thing that we have from Andrew Jackson is actually a good thing. He preserves the union. And in doing so, it's something that has lasted and continues to last for, for a little while. Until so we have the Civil War, which we'll get to. Preserving the Union. Remember, the United States is a group of separate states that work together, are united. We've talked about in our past, we talked about the Articles of Confederation not working because the states were wanting to all do their own thing. And then we finally get the Constitution and everyone agrees on it. And we are all moving forward as one unified country. Well, Andrew Jackson's only the seventh president. And guess what? Some of the states are like, we don't like what you're doing. Deuces, we're out. We're going to go do our own thing. So South Carolina is one of those states, okay? South Carolina. was mad about a law, a federal law, a United States government law. And so they said, we have the right to nullify it. That means we don't have to follow your rules. We have the right to nullify any federal law. And if we get mad enough, we can just leave the union. So South Carolina was mad about a law. a federal law, not a state law. They can make their own state laws. <clears throat> and so they said, they could, or they had the right They can nullify or just ignore any federal law. Now, can you imagine what that would do to our country if the government, the United States government passed a law and everybody was like, nah, we're not gonna do that, <laughs> whatever. Big problem, big, big problem, okay? Or, or just leave, or they could just leave the union if they wanted to. So can you imagine if every other day a state was like, yeah, we're not a part of the United States anymore. We don't like that. So we're going to be our own country. Bye guys. Wouldn't that be weird? Wouldn't that be weird? Tennessee was all of a sudden like, no, nah, we're not part of the United States. We're going to do our own thing. That's pretty much what South Carolina was doing, even though we had the constitution and all the states had signed it and agreed on it. South Carolina was like, no, you made us mad, so we're not doing it. Well, Jackson, Andrew Jackson was like, no, 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 we're not on my watch. We're not having this on my watch. Uh, we are not going to agree to that. And you're not going to threaten us with that every other day, South Carolina or Tennessee or Florida, or whoever. We're not going to be threatened with that every other day. If you're not going to follow the U.S. law, then we're going to have some troops come down there and make you follow it. Okay. Eventually, Congress passed a law that, that, um, that made kind of a compromise with South Carolina so they wouldn't be so angry. And they were like, okay, cool, we're go we're going, we'll be good. We'll, we'll, we'll stay a part of the union. We'll, we'll, follow, we'll follow this law, at least you compromised. But it was kind of big that Andrew Jackson, he kind of put his foot down that, no, we're not having this. We are going to preserve, we are going to keep the union together. So Jackson did not agree that they could just up and leave or nullify what they wanted.
and threatened to use force if South Carolina did not follow US law. And they knew because Andrew Jackson kept good on his promises when it came to a fight, right? They knew Andrew Jackson would come down there. He'd do something about it. And so eventually a compromising law, a compromised law, meaning that they compromised, got both sides to be happier, was passed. And I'm cutting out a quote from page 96 from Andrew Jackson. And he said, I feel in the depths of my soul that it is the highest, most sacred and most irreversible part of my obligation to preserve the union of these states, although it may cost me my life. So he was very big on saying, you know, one of the things I do have to do as president is keep us all together. Even if, you know, they are threatening um, to assassinate me, even if they're threatening uh, to leave, that I will go down there and use force to make, them, uh, to make them stay a part of this and obey the US laws that they have signed that they have signed off on. Okay, so I'm putting that in here. And that is it, the three big things, two, two really bad ones, Indian Removal Act and Trail of Tears. And the third one's a good one. We do wanna have our union preserved. We don't want states, you know, just when they get their panties in a wad, going like, I'm out, I'm done, you made me mad. Okay, so make sure you have preservation of the union as well. Okay, those are the three big things about Andrew Jackson uh, that you will see on your quiz. So make sure that you have those three things in your notes and good luck on your quiz on Friday. Use your notes. Okay, bye guys.